Okay, uh, I think I will start now. Uh, we are a little bit uh, uh, delayed, but uh, not that much. Okay, and I hope today I will I will use uh, properly the computer. Uh, and uh, well, here in the transparency, uh, uh, you can see that the last point we were uh, seeing yesterday, namely the the four uh, uh, basic processes uh, involving the interaction between particle, hole, and phonon. I remember you, uh, the one in the left was uh, the one connecting the particle with the <coughs> uh, part another particle and the phonon. And all these expressions here are cor related to the one I've been using yesterday, uh, namely the one corresponding to the vibrating potential model. But uh, as I told you yesterday, uh, this matrix element calculated in this way, you can also calculate it through a standard RPA. Hmm? So just to insist in this aspect that this is not something uh, necessarily related to the vibrating potential model, you can calculate this vertex mm, through the residual of your scan or your goni or whatever interaction you use. And it would look, uh, yesterday we saw this also, something like this. Your particles go to P prime through the interaction with all the components of the particle hole of the phonon, both the forward amplitudes and also through the backward amplitudes. Mm. So you can calculate this in several uh, schemes, but uh, the meaning is always the same. Okay. Well, uh, so in principle, uh, this is the, our starting point. Uh, remember that yesterday, uh, using the vibrating potential model, I told you that the energies of the oscillation or the frequencies of the oscillation had verified the uh, so-called dispersion relation. I remember you the expression. It contains the particle hole matrix element through the if we use the vibrating potential model divided by the particle hole square minus the frequency square and here it you got the uh, coupling constant the still consistent coupling constant which uh, uh, i remember you just today we got the integral of the derivative of the density, the derivative of the potential integrated over the radius of the nucleus. And before uh, going ahead with all the possibilities that the, this kind of processes will open for calculating the spectra, I would uh, say uh, just a few words or just one word about the numerical solution, how you solve numerically this, this dispersion relation. Uh, you see here uh, the frequency that uh, we want to calculate. And uh, the way, the standard way to at least to figure out how this uh, equation is solved is to plot this quantity as a function of the energy in a continuous way. So if you plot this as a function of energy of omega, you see that we will get some infinites precisely at the energies of the particle holes. So if we put here the particle hole energies, the, the one of the first particle hole, the second particle hole, the third particle hole, and so on, this uh, function looks something like this. It goes to infinite in the exactly in the energies of the particle hole, the amperage of particle holes. Mm -hmm. And then, well, if there is another shell, 
you will have something like this again and again. Okay, and now these, uh, uh, the solutions of this equation correspond to the points where this quantity is equal to the inverse of the coupling constant. The coupling constant is positive. As you can see, the, derita the derivative of the density is negative, mm? but the derivative of the potential is positive. Mm? So when you integrate, you obtain a negative quantity, but because of this minus, the coupling constant here is positive. So you <coughs> uh, put this uh, line corresponding to the coupling constant it in this way. The frequencies that verify that the, this expression coincide with the inverse of the coupling constant are giving you the solution of the problem. As you can see, larger the coupling constant is, lower this line will come. And this gives rise to the lowering, larger the coupling constant, uh, to, to the lowering of the whole low line. So the low line, the energy of the low line, let us suppose that the, the value is this one. The energy of the low line would be this one. Then you have other solutions, of course. As in RPA, you have many solutions. And then you arrive to the region of the giant. Well, the collective states are those appearing when you have a gap. If you have a good gap in the beginning of the particle hole energies, because you are in a closed shell a nucleus, for example, you have here a large gap between zero and the first particle hole, and this gives rise to a rather collective state, which is the low line. A similar thing happens when you go to the next shell, where you find the gap, the shell gap, and this produces the giant rest. Okay, so uh, mm, this is about the energy, about the uh, wave function. Well, remember that yesterday we were saying that the wave function is very easily calculated by evaluating <coughs> this diagram. Okay, so here you have the energy of the phonon that you just calculate. Here you have the different particle holes energies. If you evaluate the following the usual uh, rules, this uh, diagram, this gives you the vertex in the numerator, the vertex that in this case would be the particle hole decay, divided by h bar omega minus sum of the particle hole. Each particle hole then gets a different amplitude according to the different energy you put and also because not all the particle hole matrix elements are identical. There is some dependence on, on the details of the particle hole you are considering in evaluating the vertex. But anyway, ap apart from these uh, differences in the different particle hole, if you get a, a, a large lowering in the low line because the coupling constant is large and also because you have a shell gap, then, uh, as you can see, the different amplitudes will be kind of uh, similar, more similar, the, uh, strong, the, the, the stronger the degeneracy of, <coughs> of these uh, particle hole jumps are. And this was another condition, you remember, that uh, I was uh, saying yesterday, that in order to, to get a collective state, uh, you need uh, many contributions of uh, particle holes. And this is something that happens uh, with the low line and also with the generals. Instead, for the solutions that um, are trapped between the uh, different particle hole energies, uh, you, you see that uh, you have negative contributions from one side and positive contribution from the other. And there is no coherence. Hmm? There is no coherence until you get to the to the new gap. You obtain again a coherence in the different 
particle hole amplitudes. Okay, so uh, this is just to <coughs> uh, uh, emphasize the character of the collective uh, phonons. And now, uh, let me, <coughs> as I was saying before, let me uh, start to use this kind of uh, vertices in order to calculate different things. And <coughs> the, well, we will, I will try to show you different applications of all these uh, interactions, but the, let me start with the A plus one system. The A plus one system, uh, yesterday we saw that uh, uh, can uh, be represented as single particle states, if in the system you just leave the occupied part states in the ground state and move hmm, and move the extra particle, you can have different hmm, according to the exact orbital you put the particle, you, you can have different states of one particle character. But of course you can also, because the core is there, and you can obtain or you can generate vibrations of the core, and of course you can have also configurations of one particle, one phonon. Of course, you can go ahead and think in one particle to phonon, etc. Mm. Okay, but uh, as I was saying yesterday, <coughs> this is just the uh, beginning of the story because uh, all these configurations interact among themselves. For example, this configuration can interact with this other Mm, through precisely the particle scattering. Mm, so you have an interaction that brings you from this configuration to this other. Mm, precisely through the particle scattering uh, vertex. And uh, also you uh, can have other different interactions. And uh, in this sense, if we want to analyze uh, the uh, consequences of this interaction, well, we will have to diagonalize in respect to the original energies of this configuration, this new interaction. Okay, this is <coughs> something that can be done easily. For example, if you have a particle in an orbital J, as here, and uh, interacting with a particle in the J prime with the phonon, well, if you <coughs> want to take into account this matrix element, which connects <coughs> the particle with the particle phonon, all you have to do is, well, diagonalize this interaction using, in principle, the energy you have for the particle from the Wood fraction or from hartree fock and also using the energy of the particle in this configuration plus the energy of the phonon that you calculated in the even system. Usually we, we should think about the low line, but in principle you can have many, many different kind of phonons as I was saying before. Well, uh, of course, uh, you have also the uh, complex conjugate of, or of this one. Well, usually this uh, uh, vertices here are real, uh, the faces are taken so that uh, uh, for convenience all, most, all of them are real, but in any, in any case if you put the complex, the complex conjugate of this one that brings you from the J prime phonon to the J, well you obtain a little matrix, time by two, two, two by two, sorry, and uh, if you solve the eigenvalue problem, let me call this the x amplitude and this the c amplitude. More precisely, this will be the x amplitude uh, of the angular momentum, j, and this would be <coughs> the uh, c amplitude of the configuration j prime phonon. Okay, so you have a, this is very elementary, but anyway. You have a new <coughs> uh, eigenvalue problem, uh, of course, uh, you, you can 
uh, solve the thing, uh, looking for the zeros of the determinant. But, uh, well, you, you can also try to use perturbation. If this uh, matrix element are small, you can, well, you can <coughs> uh, express, for example, the, per uh, the, uh, the effect of this interaction on the energy of the particle hmm, that will bring you to a new energy as the original one, plus y following the usual perturbation method, you multiply by the square of this matrix element and divide by the difference in energy, the original one, and the intermediate and the, per the other state with which you, you are happy. Okay. Well, this is a pure perturbative. Of course, there would be other terms. Fourth order, fifth order, etc. But uh, let me uh, just tell you that if here in the denominator, this is a very technical question. If here in the denominator you put the, ori the, the energy you are looking for, then you don't need uh, to go to higher orders. Because then you are using what is called the Bridgewin Wigner, hmm? Bridgewin -Wigner uh, perturbation theory, in which uh, uh, many, many <coughs> of the higher order terms are in included through this change in the denominator. Okay, well, in any case, uh, this is a very technical thing, but uh, you can, as I was saying, use uh, perturbation theory and uh, note that uh, this uh, uh, correction to the energy can be expressed in terms of uh, a Feynman diagram in which you have the particle, the intermediate state, and the particle again. Hmm? If you evaluate this Feynman diagram in, using the usual rules, you multiply, uh, you put in the numerator all the, the, t the, the vertices, here you have two times the same vertex, and you put in the denominator the difference between the energy you are calculating and the intermediate energy, well, obviously, you obtain this uh, So we can uh, write down the effect of this coupling through this kind of uh, di diagrammatic representation. And this would be the one giving rise to the correction to the single particle energy. But in the same way, uh, you can evaluate the correction to the particle form configuration. The particle form configuration also gets uh, modified by the interaction, and following the same uh, reasoning, we can <coughs> Uh, write down the new energy. So the new energy of the particle phonon, let's write it down in this way, would be the original one, okay, plus, sorry, plus the correction. If you write down the perturbative uh, expression, would be the matrix element, which is again the same because we are dealing with just one matrix element, a square, so we would have this. And then in the denominator we would have the energy of the state we are perturbing minus the energy of the state with which it is uh, interacting. Again, if we use the Green Wigner uh, uh, expansion, we will put here not the amperter but the exact energy we are calculating, and in this way uh, we can obtain the exact solution just uh, arriving to the second order. Okay, and uh, again this uh, mm, correction can be uh, represented diagrammatically. How? Well, it's rather easy. Hmm? 
we have the original energy plus a Feynman diagram in which we are perturbing the particle phono state interacting with the single particle state. So we will have this <coughs> diagrammatic representation in, we, in which applying the usual uh, uh, Feynman rules, uh, obviously you obtain this. You have to multiply the vertices. This is done here. And then you have the difference between the energy of the state you are perturbing and the intermediate state. OK, so in this way, we uh, obtain some consequence on the uh, energy of the different states uh, with which we were uh, starting, namely the energies of the particle in the bootstraction or Hartree-Fock energy and the, and the energy of the, of the particle form. Uh, but uh, these uh, are not all the possible diagrams that we can write down for, <coughs> for example, the phonon, <coughs> the particle phonon energy. Well, let me say before uh, going ahead that uh, this diagram, of course, at each vertex, hmm, has to uh, verify the, the <coughs> conservation of, of angular momentum. So each different element of the multiplet will couple with different particles which should satisfy the <coughs> that the angular momentum is the same. So every element of the multiplet, depending on which is the angular momentum to which the particle and the phono couples, will have a different diagram because the intermediate state will be also different. And in principle, this is a way in which uh, we obtain a different or a splitting of the multiple. Hmm? Okay, so every element of the multiple suppose that we have, I don't know, a, a, D, a D5 half coupled to a 2 plus. In this case, you can go from 9 half to 1 half. <coughs> okay. All of them with positive parity. Well, and they will uh, split in some way, not precisely this one. Uh, one should look in detail how is for the different uh, coupling mom angular momentum, which is going up and which is going down. But uh, uh, some splitting will be obtained because each of the different coupling mo angular momentum will give rise to a different evaluation of this diagram. But as I was saying, this is not the only mechanism that, ki that can give rise to <coughs> uh, 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 splitting of the multiplet. In, uh, in quantum field theory, and also here, uh, applying to the, applied to the nucleus, you have to consider all the different time orderings hmm, to complete the perturbative calculation. And you here have, as you can see, two vertices that can be in this time ordering or that could be in this other time ordering. So if you call this the vertex number one and call this the vertex number two, in this diagram, the vertex number one was before in time than the vertex number two. In this case, the time ordering is the, is the opposite because the first one is the number two and the second one is the number one, okay? So this uh, uh, also have to be evaluated in order to complete the, <coughs> uh, in order to complete the uh, uh, calculation of, of the perturbation of the, of the energy. And uh, again, at each vertex, angular momentum is conserved, so, uh, Note that here you go from here to 
two vacuum. So note that the vertex that we are playing with in this diagram is the vacuum polarization. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will disconnect from internet, maybe. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, in this case, as I was saying, we are using the vacuum polarization vertex, hmm, which is the one that ap appears in this other time order. How do you calculate this diagram? Again, this is very systematic. You put uh, this vertex multiplied by this other, okay? And then in the denominator, you put the difference between the energy you want to calculate, if the exact one if you use bridge wigner and the uh, energy of the intermediate state. In this case, the intermediate state is quite complicated because it contains one particle, one hole, another particle, and two phonons. Well, you have to sum up all of them, and then you obtain uh, two times, because this particle is the same as this one, the hole, which carries a negative value because it is a hole. And then, uh, finally, sorry, uh, on the contrary, the hole, let's call it J hole, mm -hmm. J hole, and finally 2 H bar omega. Mm -hmm. Well, again, uh, as uh, was uh, saying here, depending on the uh, details mm, of the different <coughs> uh, uh, angular momentum to which we are coupling, mm, we will obtain a different uh, uh, result for this diagram depending of the angular moment, okay? So this will continue to produce splitting, maybe in the same sense or different one. Hmm? So this second diagram will give rise also to a effect on the, um, on the uh, splitting. But uh, I, I uh, anticipate you that there are four different diagrams. These are just two of them. Let me now go <coughs> to uh, the other ones. The other ones, well, no, better. Before we go to the other ones, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the other ones. Yeah, yeah. No, I was confused. This is not. Okay, uh, the next we are going to consider uh, requires a little introduction because, uh, in principle, if you have if you want to play with all these processes, a possible diagram that you could use would be one in which you have a particle hole hmm? uh, decay or a particle hole uh, complex conjugate here. And uh, of course, this mm, mm, could be evaluated as usually put in this vertex put in this other vertex, which are equal, hmm? so it appears a square, and here the difference between the original energy, which is the particle, uh, the energy of the particle, and the energy of the phonon, you want to calculate, minus the energy of the intermediate state. In this case, one particle, uh, let me call this particle hole, so plus a particle, minus the whole. Hmm? Okay, but uh, here appears one of the specific, uh, specificities of the uh, application of quantum field theory or Feynman diagram techniques to the nucleus. Because uh, our phonon, our bosons, have been calculated in RPA. And in RPA, if you remember, we have already considered the fact that uh, the phonon is constructed on top of the particle holes. This is precisely the X amplitude. Mm. And also for the backward amplitude, we have mm, this expression. So the bubbles were already taken into account in the, in the RPA level. Mm. All the correlations coming for uh, the appearance of the bubbles, as they are called 
in this context, the particle hole that appears and disappears without any uh, perturbance, the bubbles are, were already considered in RPA. So we should not consider them again, because we will be doing overcounting. We will be doing RPA again. So any bubble hmm, must be omitted. And I uh, uh, insist a bubble is just a particle hole that appears and disappears without any intermediate perturbance. OK. So one would say this diagram is not, well, this is what I'm saying. This diagram shouldn't be considered because it was already uh, cons uh, included in the RPA calculation. But this diagram has, even if we don't have to include it, is showing something also peculiar of the application of quantum field theory to the nucleus. Because uh, if you have a particle occupying a level J that coincides with one of the particles that the phonon would like to use for generating fully the RPA uh, wave function, we will find some Pauli principle uh, incompatibility. Precisely when, when this, when the quantum numbers of this particle were exactly the ones here, mm, this configuration that was taken into account in the RPA, because at that time we, we, we were not thinking in applying it to the A plus one system, but now we realize that this will uh, put uh, a, a difficulty for uh, developing the full RPA uh, correlations. So we should eliminate, we, should, we shouldn't count all the bubbles, but we should eliminate precisely that bubble in which the quantum numbers here are exactly the quantum numbers of the particle we have uh, on top of the phonon. So, only, only this bubble should be considered. And should be considered with negative value, because it's something that we have to eliminate from the correlation in RPA. Well, this, in the language of the nuclear field theory, is <coughs> represented by a new diagram in which, due to the equality of these two fermions, we can perform an exchange of both. Since they are exactly having the same quantum numbers, Jm and Jm here, you can exchange them. Of so the evaluation of the vertices are exactly the same that you have here because they are exactly the same fermion here and there. You have exchanged two things that are ide identical. But in the, in, the, in the middle, you have to permute one fermion with the other. And this, we know, gives rise to a negative value because of the permutation of fermions. So this negative value that we were putting here is already included through the crossing of the fermions. So in this way, we correct for Pauli principle. It's kind of paradoxical that the graph that, that corrects for Pauli principle uh, precisely show two fermions in the same in the same level, but as I was telling you, it, this is just because it's something that we are subtracting. And the subtraction comes through this uh, exchange of the two uh, fermions here. Okay, so in this way, and in, we can systematically hmm, account for the Pauli principle by omitting any bubble, but allowing any uh, diagram that uh, show the same 
uh, fermions inside because are the ones that are giving us the correction to Pauli principle, due to Pauli principle. Okay, so far we have then, uh, three of theorems. Let me uh, uh, make a little uh, resume. We had this one, which was the first. Then we have this, which was the other time ordering. Now we have introduced this one due to the <coughs> Pauli principle. Okay. And the fourth one has to do also with Pauli principle, but just uh, ap apply to the backward amplitudes. The backward amplitudes also like to have uh, all the levels available to mm, develop all the RPA correlations. So, in principle, we could evaluate this diagram through, a, and in this case, the vacuum polarization vertex in the presence of a particle. But as I was saying before, this kind of contribution was already taken into account at RPA level. But, ex sorry, this is going up. But we have to eliminate, again, for the same reason, the situation in which the, this backward amplitude is uh, trying to use precisely the uh, uh, state in which we have put the particle. So again, making an exchange here, and the exchange is always do in the same way. Uh, this one goes here and this one goes there. Mm -hmm. We obtain finally the fourth of the, uh, of the diagrams. Let me uh, write it down in a more clear way. This is something that goes like this. Okay. This form, for example. Hmm? So this is the J, the other J, the crossing, hmm? which is giving rise to the su subtraction, the hole that is uh, doing nothing here, but uh, taking into account which particle hole we are eliminating, and the phonon. Okay. Well, this diagram also correct for power principle. Uh, due to the uh, backward amplitude correlations uh, uh, inhibited by the presence of the particle. And finally, this uh, completes the collection hmm, of diagrams that give rise to <coughs> the interaction between uh, a particle phonon and particle uh, configuration. Okay. Well, let me show you this <coughs> a calculation uh, a, an example of this <coughs> okay. it's the case it's a classical work by Ikuko Hamamoto and uh, is related to the bismuth uh, 209. Bismuth 209 is uh, a proton on, on top of a lead 208. Lead 208 is a double magic nucleus. Uh, it, it shows experimentally, and when you calculate also find it, a very strong 3 minus octuple uh, vibrating state. And if you add a proton, well, you go to the bismuth 209. And, if <coughs> and in the bismuth, uh, you, have, you can put <coughs> the proton in different levels. You can put the H9 half, F7 half, etc. Hmm? But uh, if you just leave it in the lowest state, the H9 half, and uh, let the core to perform the 3 minus, well, you would obtain a multiplet. In this case, in this case it's a septuplet, I think. It, is, yeah, it goes from 15 to 3. No, it's more than a septuplet. No? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, it's a septuplet. Hmm? You have all this possible uh, angular momentum. Uh, since the H has negative parity with a negative parity of of the <coughs> octuple vibration. Well, in principle, you would have this septuplet. And if you don't do anything else, you would obtain a degenerate uh, septuplet with exactly the energy of the phonon. If you take as a reference the energy uh, of uh, the ground state of uh, bismuth uh, with a particle in the H9 half. So in principle, all of them would have this 2.6 mEV. Well, but uh, if you go to uh, the experiment, you see that, uh, well, here is not very clear in detail. I will show you a table now. But of course, they are not completely degenerate. They, are, they lie in a kind of uh, uh, energy band. And uh, in this table, you have the experimental values. Hmm? Here you have the septuplet, and here is the, sh the shift with respect to the original energy. There is one of the elements of the multiplet that gets a strong, a strong uh, quoted and quoted because we are talking about KV, in this, ca in this case uh, 130, and uh, well, and then on the opposite side appears the three half with a negative shift of, of minus 100 kV. Well, these are the result of the calculation. So the gross structure of the calculation is reproduced, not every single detail. This is a calculation when you perform actual, uh, actual calculation with uh, large bases and more uh, power, uh, uh, computing power you get better result, but uh, anyway, this is good enough because you obtain the gross structure. This is coming very, going high. This one is also going quite low. Well, these other are small numbers, so you don't worry too much about it. These are kind of details. But in, in, <coughs> in the case of bismuth, uh, uh, if you just include th these four diagrams, uh, you obtain a, a quite wrong, uh, at least with respect to the other elements of the multiplets, result for the three five half. Uh, sorry, for the three half. Well, uh, this uh, uh, was uh, understood and uh, corrected in, in a way that, uh, well, I will f just flash because we cannot cover all the um, the aspects of uh, the nuclear field theory. But <coughs> let me just flash, as I was saying. Uh, we are uh, dealing with particle phonon, and the phonon is a correlated state. Okay, And this is what we have taken into account for uh, elaborating four diagrams. But if you think in, if this is the Fermi energy, if you think that you have a particle in the H9 half, then you have uh, whole states here, particle states here. The phonon is a correlated particle whole excitation. Well, this we already know very well. And this, as I was saying, has already been taken into account through this for there. But uh, another possibility when you uh, have this kind of uh, uh, configuration is that the particle that is promoted goes exactly to the H9 half. And correlate not with the whole, but with the particle. The stronger correlation appears when they couple to zero plus. It's a kind of pairing. Pairing we will talk in the, in the next days. But if they pair, and you know probably that pairing involves not only two le uh, one level, but uh, the, the correlated two particles like to use all the possible places where coupled to zero plus. So they will uh, go also to the F7 half, the two particles, or the, to the I13 half. Hmm? So they will use 
they, these two particles, these two protons, will use all the possibilities mm, and will, with some amplitude, mm, produce what is called the coherent pair of particles. Th this is co also called the pair addition mode. Mm. So, and it's represented in this way. So if you have two particles that are coupled to zero in this case, mm, in a collective or correlated way, similar to what we were having for the particle hole, but in this case for a particle particle, then you produce a highly collective state here. Mm. So the difference with respect, well, of course, you are leaving a hole down here because you need uh, to promote a particle in order to have two particles in this side. Mm. So what you obtain mm, in this kind of correlation is another kind of uh, state in which you have a two particle correlated plus a hole. And uh, well, these states can also be constructed. Uh, note that the, two part, the, the pair addition correspond to two protons and this would be the uh, uh, polonium 210. So if you have polonium 210 and the, and the hole can be in a S1 half or in a D3 half or in a H11 half, of course you have other possibilities, but these are the most uh, important because they are close in energy to the multiplet. Well, you see that uh, uh, precisely this one contains the same angular momentum and the same parity of one of the elements of the multiplet. This is not because one half doesn't belong to the multiplet, the multiplet was not arriving to one half, and this is not also uh, neither interacting with the multiplet because it contains a, a different parity. So for the specific case of the particle phonon configuration, when they couple to the three half plus, you can make interaction between this config configuration in which the particle hole is correlated and this other configuration in which the, parti in which the particles are correlated. Well, the way this uh, kind of configuration interacts is very similar to uh, the diagrams we are uh, standing here. Uh, it happens through, in this case, <coughs> the exchange of the elements that you uh, correlate. In this case, you were correlating a hole and a particle, but now the particle goes with the other particle and correlate in the uh, pair addition mode. Okay, this is here, I don't want it to go so much in detail, but uh, in, in any case, the, the, the thing I wanted to stress is that when you take into account also this kind of mm, uh, couplings that now I don't have time to, to, to go mo in more detail, you obtain, in this case, a good uh, reproduction of the of the uh, of this specific also of this specific element of the multiplet. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, then playing with the, uh, all the possible vertices and all the possible time orderings and evaluating all the possible Feynman diagrams, we are uh, m making uh, configuration mixings, shifting the energies, correcting by Pauli, and producing a spectra that. Uh, are uh, in nice agreement with experience. This is just an example. I'm, I'm uh, uh, focusing on the, on the multiplet because it's a nice example where everything is rather clear that is uh, 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 due, in fact, to uh, the particle relation coupling. But as uh, I was saying, uh, well, now I would go to the single particle self-energy. Maybe uh, we can stop uh, five, or five or ten minutes and then I will uh, continue with the self-energy of the particle. Energy, 
usually the particles in nuclei are at energies about uh, uh, minus one minus eight MeV. Okay, but according to this diagram, the energy you obtain is larger. It's about let's let's say for example, is, this is just a numeric illustration. You will obtain minus nine MeV. Well, because the state you are producing is more correlated. Okay, but then comes the other diagram that takes into account the fact that you are disturbing the uh, ground state, uh, the ground state correlations, and well, here you again have uh, a vertex square because it appears two times. And uh, if you evaluate, you have to put the difference between the initial energy and the intermediate energy. The intermediate energy contains two times the energy of the particle because it appears in the intermediate state, the energy of the whole, and the energy of the form. Okay. Uh, if you s and don't forget the minus sign here mm, due to the crossing. So if you simplify here, this goes with this, and the negative here goes with the negative here, you can see that in fact this is a, a systematically positive number because this quantity is positive, the energy of a particle minus the energy of a whole is certainly positive, the energy of the phonon is positive, the square in the numerator is positive, so as I was, uh, uh, as we could expect, this is giving rise to a systematic positive number that we uh, rise somewhat hmm? again the energy of the level. Hmm? So from one side we are getting more correlations, and the particle can do m more dynamical things, but on, on the other side we are getting uh, less correlation for the original ground state. Well, uh, in the end, the most uh, relevant or say as a rule, uh, the, the, the summation of these two diagrams gives usually a negative value. Hmm? Of course, if you go to very high energy, as I was saying before, the, the situation changes. But for energies, sorry, for levels close to the Fermi energy, as a rule, this number, this correlation is uh, smaller than this one. Because, well, because this numerator, since it is the difference between <coughs> two quantities, while this is uh, systematically the summation, can uh, be a, a smaller, hmm? you can have smaller denominators here than here, and uh, in the end, uh, this diagram gives a stronger contribution. Well, until now, I, I've been uh, telling uh, about only uh, the coupling with one particle phonon, but uh, uh, there are many phonons, there are many particles, so the J prime and the and the phonon with which uh, a given particle state can couple are many. So in principle, you will have here to sum hmm, over J prime and lambda to obtain the total effects of this kind of correlations on the particle. And similarly here, you will have to take into account all the possible phonons and all the possible holes Uh, that can uh, give rise to this kind of correction. Mm? Well, uh, I have write down here the, uh, the, the Rayleigh-Schrodinger expression for the perturbative uh, evaluation of the diagrams. Again, if you put here the exact energy you are looking for, uh, you obtain the Brijuan Wigner uh, mm, uh, expressions. And uh, in this case, well, in this case, uh, they give you uh, the exact in the sense that coincides with the diagonalization of, of, of the matrix. Okay. So uh, these two are the uh, main diagrams giving rise to corrections to the energy of the particle, and they are called usually the self-energy diagrams. Hmm? Uh, they are the self energy is uh, usually denoted with a uh, sigma, uh, 
big sigma. And, uh, well, uh, for every particle, of course, it's a different, it's a different quantity. And, uh, well, so in the end, the different levels hmm, around the Fermi energy, different the different energies of a single particle state are around the Fermi energy. These are the experimental ones hmm, that uh, uh, you observed include all these effects, hmm, certainly. Well, uh, uh, these effects are uh, not uh, very small, neither extremely strong, because otherwise perturbation wouldn't work uh, very well, but uh, uh, are sizable. I mean, the, the corrections that you can obtain, and later I will show you maybe some uh, of <coughs> calculations, uh, are of the order of one MeV, maybe, or even more. Hmm? So if you uh, try compare Hartree-Fock calculation with directly with the single particle state that you find in the experiment, well, uh, systematically you should find some kind of difference because in Hartree Fock you are not including all these uh, kind of uh, processes that inevitably are uh, affecting the energy of the particle states. Okay, uh, well, uh, what I have just said uh, for the particle, hmm? putting a particle here, modifies the energy due to these two processes, can be said also for the whole state. If you, perf if you uh, eliminate a particle from below the Fermi energy, you create a whole state. The energy of a whole state is minus the Woods action or Hartley Fock single particle energy. Mm. But uh, it gets corrections also of, the, of this kind. Well, how do you get or how do you calculate? It's not difficult. The new value for whole will be the original one plus the diagram correcting for uh, uh, the <coughs> whole energy due to the whole scattering processes. This is the whole scattering vertex. And of course, the other time ordering, which is related to the Pauli principle correction, namely the, the diagram in which the whole uh, 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 the whole energy is corrected due to the inhibition of some of the ground state correlation. Remember that in the ground state, in the even-even nucleus, we have this kind of processes. If now you have created a hole, this, the particle that is missing in this hole cannot be used for the vacuum to perform this particle hole configuration. So again, you have to subtract the contribution where these two are exactly the same quantum numbers. And in fact, it's again this diagram here. Well, these diagrams are evaluated in the usual uh, fashion. You put here the, the vertices, for example, for this one. So, so for the whole, we, we will have hmm, we have this vertex, which is the whole scattering vertex, it appears a square, so we will have <coughs> this whole matrix element hmm? square, so it's positive quantity, and then the difference in energy between the initial state and the intermediate state. Okay. Well, uh, this uh, 
is this term and uh, uh, the other one. Similarly, you obtain it by multiplying these two vertexes that are equal. In this case, this is a particle, sorry. Okay. This is the whole. So this is a particle minus the state of the intermediate configuration in which we have two times the whole energy, the particle energy, and the phonon energy. Okay. Well, these are the expressions. Uh, let's uh, take a look to the sign, whether they are positive or negative, as we did before for the particle. Okay. Well, <coughs> uh, here, as a rule, as I was saying before, for holes close to the Fermi energy, below but close to the Fermi energy, this is a negative, hmm, a negative uh, value because the f energy of the phonon, so this tends to be negative. And this other, ah, well, here I forgot an important ingredient that this, the negative value coming from the crossing. And in here, uh, if you uh, can simplify, this goes with this, this goes with this. Again, here you have a systematically positive hmm? energy of a particle minus energy of a hole is positive. The phonon energy is positive. So as w we had before, this is positive also. Hmm? So this correct for the energy of the hole. But uh, here we obtain the uh, the energy of the system, namely the energy that you have to give to the system to, pr to produce a hole, which is minus the energy of the single particle states of a hole. But uh, uh, if we want uh, to go back to the uh, single particle energy, well, we just change the sign of this uh, equality. So the renormalized single particle, no uh, uh, energy of the system, but single particle state energy will be the original one. We are talking about a hole hmm, here. And then we will change the sign of these other two diagrams. So hmm, we are just changing the sign because we've passed from energy of the system to single particle energies of a hole. Okay. This was systematically negative, or as a rule negative, this is systematically positive. Mm -hmm. So if we think in, in terms of single particle states, we were seeing before that the single particle state of a particle uh, do like this when you added two corrections. Okay. And in, for the whole state, what you see for the single particle whole state energy, you obtain from the original single energies, and then finally something that is negative. As it happened before, uh, usually this correction is larger than this. So in the end, we have something of that sort. So in the end, for the particles, we obtain an energy which is closer to the Fermi energy, and the same happens with the single particle states of the whole. Hmm? The single particle states of the whole give rise to a correction that, in the end, brings you the single particle energy closer to the Fermi energy than you started. Well, so in the end, this happens with uh, many or with several single particle states around the Fermi energy. Okay, not only with one of them, many of them will play the similar role. Hmm? So in the end, what you get is that you end up with a higher density of states around the Fermi energy than you started with 
from Hardy Pop, for example. And this is something that systematically has been, uh, uh, let's say, confirmed by many, many <coughs> hartree fock calculations. Most of the hartree fock calculations, as a rule, tend to give a too low density, uh, and, uh, level density around the fermions. Of course, there are so many um, interactions, for example, that some of them, some of them, uh, mm, uh, coincide in, in <coughs> uh, with the experimental average level density, but most of them, mm, most of them have this characteristic that the level density is l much lower than what is observed. What what is a, a, a good news because uh, in Hartree Fock you are not uh, still performing this kind of correction. So I would say that it's nice uh, that most of the Hartree Fock have this kind of defect because uh, they should leave room to these processes that for surely are occurring in, in the nucleus. In, uh, as I, as we are explaining today. Can you explain this in the more effective maps? Well, uh, yeah, sometimes this uh, uh, change in the level density uh, around the Fermi energy is expressed in terms of, the, of what is called the, fe the omega mass or, or the effective mass. If uh, you think, for example, in a simple uh, harmonic oscillator with a particle, mm, of mass m, uh, remember that the frequency and so the energies are given by an expression that tells you that higher the, the mass, smaller the space in between the levels. Well, a similar thing can be done here you are going to a higher density, which is like uh, having uh, nucleons with a higher effective mass. So in a way, we can say that uh, the mass of the nucleus, the, of the nucleon, sorry, get renormalized due to these processes in such a way that in the end, the effective mass is larger than the one that we have in heart report. In most of the heart report calculation, the effective mass is about 0.8, the bare mass. Mm. Uh, an effect that is due to the non-locality of the mean field, of the hartree fock mean field. But when you uh, add this kind of correction, curiously enough, the new mass, once these corrections are included, uh, gives you back to the bare mass. There is no uh, strong reason why the end, the final effective mass should be equal to the bare mass, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the numerical case, okay? So in Hartree Fock, usually you work with 0.7, and in experiment, the level density that is observed is very often and systematically very close or corresponding very closely to a uh, effective mass one, hmm? the bare mass. Okay, uh, so I have already talked about the particle renormalization, the whole renormalization. Both of them have two uh, different diagrams. And uh, well, let me in the last uh, minutes to uh, reformulate uh, these diagrams in a way that will be extremely useful and I will use uh, the next and last lesson of next Monday to uh, uh, extend the uh, nuclear field theory to the superfluid or in, in a way open shell uh, uh, nuclei. Well, uh, I started this uh, second hour by saying that uh, we have an interaction between a particle and a particle hole configuration through this basic vertex. Okay. And this, uh, well, of course, 
the <coughs> Uh, diagonal we had the energies of the amplitude uh, configurations and uh, uh, well from the from here we ended up with this Feynman, this Feynman diagram then I said well uh, we have to compute all the time ordering so we have to consider this but now I want to play the the, the inverse game I want to formulate this diagram in in, in a matricial way. Mm? The reason why I, this is useful uh, will be clear in, in a moment. Well, uh, it's not difficult to realize how to do it. If you have it in front of you, I will write it again, the value of this diagram. This was the minus of the crossing the square of the vertices and the energy was in the intermediate state two times the particle minus the one of the whole <coughs> plus the phone okay well and of this was simplified sorry this way okay well uh, once we have simplified and uh, put it in this way, is, uh, as I was saying, not difficult to realize how to incorporate, mm, a, and even more, if you put here the SAC energy uh, in the Brigham big uh, uh, perturbation theory, uh, you, in principle, could uh, obtain the exact result. And it's not difficult to figure out how the matrix is, or the matrix formulation of this diagram. You just have to add a new configuration, a whole phono configuration, okay. with an energy uh, which is, uh, let me write down this again as the square of the plus the amplitude of energy minus, and let me write it down in this way because it's the way that will be useful here. Hmm? I force it to be written in the uh, difference between the amplitude or the original energy and the whole plus phonon energy. Well, all I have to do is to put here this vertex. This vertex is the particle coupled to the whole and the phonon. And in the diagonal, I, pu I must put this quantity in such a way that when I do the usual uh, perturbation uh, treatment of a matrix, I obtain this result. Mm -hmm. So you put the, perturbate, the perturbative matrix element and you divide by the difference in energy between the original energy and the energy of the configuration you are uh, coupling to. Okay. So this is a three times three matrix that incorporates both type of diagram, the direct one or the one that we saw before in the beginning and this vacuum polarization. So the vacuum polarization diagram can be incorporated in this way in the uh, matric in a matricial form. Uh, if you uh, solve this eigenvalue problem by uh, obtaining an eigenvector with amplitudes that traditionally are x, c, and d, and you obtain the eigenvalues, well, of course, you obtain again uh, what we are pr we were obtaining with the diagrams so nothing is very impressive just that we have been able to uh, uh, formulate them in a matricial form a nice thing of this matrix is that 
immediately you can incorporate also the hole because uh, the particle was coupling to the particle phonon in this way and the, uh, to the whole phonon in this way. But the hole is doing something similar. The hole gets coupled to a whole phonon configuration that the, like the one we have here and Pauli to a particle phonon like the one we have here. So exactly the same states are the ones that uh, are used for renormalizing the, the whole. So not, not only we can put together the two uh, diagrams, the Pauli principle and the direct one, but we can put together also the particle and the whole renormalization because they are using as intermediate states exactly the same, but with a different role. You see that the, the whole phonon here is the direct self-energy, and here is playing the role of the ground state correlation correction. Instead, here the particle phonon is playing the role of correcting by Pauli, and here, instead, the same particle phonon is playing the role of uh, the new correlation for the particles. But the states are the same. So we can go to a four times four matrix in which we incorporate both a particle, a hole, of course, a hole that has the same angular momentum because if you want to use the same intermediate state, you have to have uh, the same angular moment. But I, let me put B or because it will correspond to a level with the same angular momentum that the particle, but below the Fermi energy. So this B is just to express the fact that we are uh, talking about a hole, but uh, stressing the fact that they have the same G, J. So. And here uh, we will have exactly the same matrix element we have been talking about all the time for the particle. This is nothing new. But now, if we want to cup, well, uh, here of course it is uh, a medium. And now, if, if we want to add the coupling of the uh, level below uh, the Fermi energy, namely the hole, well, we will have here also the corresponding matrix element with this particle phonon configuration and the corresponding coupling matrix element with the whole phonon configuration, which was this one. And it, uh, you can really check that, in fact, the uh, correction that you obtain for the hole by treating this perturbatively, for example, are exactly the same that we obtained it before uh, performing the diagrammatic uh, uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. So in this, <coughs> of course, again, this is uh, a medium. And the rest of the matrix elements, in principle, are zero. We don't have nothing to say about them because we have not produced any uh, uh, process that requires using these elements of the matrix. Okay, but, and here I will stop, this is a, a, a matrix that allow in a single representation, the treatment of a particle and a hole. If, when we will go, and this will be the next lesson, to a superfluid system, for example, that you can study by BCS or by Harty fock bogolubo you know that particles and holes get confused with each other. 
through the what is called the pairing field. And if you remember, the pairing field is something connected particles and holes. And as, I wi as we will see, all we have to do to go to the superfluid case is just this. We will add uh, the pairing field in the same fashion that is done in the BCS. And from here, we will produce all the uh, same machinery for studying the renormalization of quasi-particles in the case of the superfluid case. But this will be uh, next Monday. So here I stop. Thank you for your attention.